Hi everybody, hope everybody's uh, fighting fit. So the Chinook, um, if you've ever seen these in the flesh, which I've seen a number of times uh, due to work, um, very impressive helicopter. Uh, I built the 148 scale Italia Air version uh, some years ago, and it's a great little kit. Uh, number seven squadron markings, one with a big Union Jack on the side. I think Rival um, reissued the same mouldings. So my task is to um, see the differences between this uh, version that trumped to uh, supply in the box and uh, what I have to do to uh, make it look like a raft version. Uh, at a quick glance it's mainly um, antennas and aerials, uh, chaff dispenser boxes, uh, the engines on the outside look the same externally but I need to check that and I will do as I go on. Uh, you don't get much uh, detail inside and I've got to come up with a way, cheap and cheerful, of uh, doing the seats because you've got that distinctive red uh, strapping that shows through the windows uh, and I need to add that and I want to add that so I've got that to uh, look at and decide uh, which is the best way to go. Cockpit wise, it's not bad but it does need detail adding there especially on things like the uh, pedals where you've got all those hydraulic lines. So I'll talk about them in detail as I get to those certain areas. So uh, I'm not going to do an inbox review because I'm sure there's going to be quite a few videos out there in YouTube land uh, already, hopefully. So uh, before I change my mind and uh, <laughs> do something else, uh, I'm going to open the box and uh, make a start. Now I've got the uh, two parts to make the fuse large. Uh, they need a bit of care around here. They're not the best of fits. I just concentrated on making sure that uh, I got a flush finish on this side regardless of what was going on internally. I don't know whether you can see um, that gap there is not even. So not the best of fit. So just a bit of care around there was required. Next thing to do was to look at this internal webbing, or should I say, um, the seats, the straps, which show through on the windows, which is what I want to uh, create. So I cut out the floor plan, which by the way, um, as far as the RAF version is con concerned, is wrong. I uh, don't know whether it's right for this mark of Chinook, but I would have thought they'd have been standard all the way through all the Chinooks. But it's wrong for the RAF one anyway. These latches here are in the wrong position. So this floor plan, even though it looks nice and well detailed, um, isn't correct. So that's the span in the works because when I create the framework for the seats, I really want to position them where these latches are. So what I've had to decide, and a bit of fudging going on here, I could either bring it out from these latches, but that would make the seats far too long. So I've had to bring up to this line here, around here, and use that. But I won't be drilling any holes in until I've made the actual framework. And before I can make the framework, I need to make the seats. So this is cut out, placed in there, and then this is going to give me uh, my area that I need to play with. The actual top bar where the seat's wrapped round finishes around here. Uh, there's a, a bar at the back that's around here and the seat's about that height. So I've got a rough idea marked here about where things should end and start. So I've taken measurements off that Then on the computer I created a few uh, mock-ups. Just cut them out. That will wrap around a bar at the top. There'll be a bar at the front here, and I think there's a bar at the back. I don't know whether that's actually attached to the actual side of the fuselage, but there's a bar there. There is a bar at the back there, and there'll be a lot of framework along here. That was my first attempt. It was too narrow, and you can see the discrepancies there. So after a bit of messing around, uh, well, this is a mock-up just to uh, see what I need to alter and change. I came up with... Uh, these just as a mock-up that's uh, roughly the length that's 17 seats there so 
So it gives me a rough idea whether my measurements are okay. Uh, every now and then, I think every three seats there's a slight gap. It's not as big as that. I've amended the artwork on the computer, which I'll show you uh, very soon. So I've narrowed these down a bit. So that uh, will be required on both sides. And a, a lot of effort and a lot of work just to uh, give the impression of these straps through the windows. So this is the artwork I've created. I've got the front here and then a back piece. The reason for that is that uh, I can fold this on the back, glue it, and then I've got both areas covered, both front and back. I've got a couple of fold marks here, top and bottom. So providing I fold it along the axis there, they should in theory all meet up. But I've had a change of heart now, uh, mainly because the doubling up on the cartridge paper will make the seats look quite thick. And plus cutting all this out on that sort of thickness of paper is going to be very laborious. So my idea now is to get rid of all the back piece, just have the front, print it out, uh, airbrush the back, hopefully in a red close enough to this, because that's the other issue as well. That red on the screen may look okay, but it may print out differently. So I may have to print out uh, a couple of times before I get the uh, red near enough or similar to what's on the photographs I've seen. Also, you can see I've added some uh, rudimentary uh, brackets, uh, some uh, seat harnesses. Now, they don't have to be uh, too brilliant because you're not going to see much looking down the tunnel. All this effort is just about this web in here, these seat straps. That's all it's about. It's about giving an impression. And I need to make it uh, cheap but cheerful if I can. So, I've got things to print this out, get rid of the that back piece, I don't want to waste all my ink printing uh, all that red when I don't need it. Make sure that the red looks okay. Let the ink dry on the paper for a few hours. Airbrush the back and then cut it all out. I will probably need to touch up a few of the edges if the white paper shows through. Length here also serves a dual purpose in that it gives me my jig, if you want for a better word, to create the uh, front framework for the legs. So I'll have a rod going through these front seats here with the legs coming out. There'll be a rod going through the back here and there'll be a rod going through the top of the strapping. And in theory, it should all work out. I'm jinxing it here now. It should all work out and give me a, a, a reasonable interpretation of the seats in the Chinook. And I have to do this twice. I think there's 17 on one side and there's 16 on the other, I think. So I've got with printing this out and see what it looks like. Now I've printed out uh, both sides. Uh, this is the right as you're looking in from the ramp. So there's one seat that's missing, so there should be 16. I've painted the um, back side and then I've sealed back and the front with some Tamiya clear. Same on the left, there's 17 on the left I think, done the same. Uh, one thing I wish I had added and missed out, there are little cutouts on the seats as you go along. I've kept them uniform, I don't know whether they vary, so there's three on the three and one on the single ones. Uh, they would have helped if I'd have drawn them uh, for me to cut out, but I've uh, marked them anyway in pencil. So hopefully it should be okay. So I'm just gonna let that dry, and both dry properly. And then I'll put a brand new scalpel blade in and uh, start uh, cutting all this out. Now I've just spent the last uh, three hours or so, seems like a whole day, converting this into what we've got here, uh, paper wise a lot of time cutting out uh, these bits here are these bits here with the ends rolled using the metal rod to uh, wrap those round and then once they're dried I'd cut out little V's uh, for where the plastic legs will go the uh, support legs some of them anyway 
this was a laborious task as I knew it would be, cutting all this out. And I wanted to cut it right, so I took my time. You can see I've bent up the lip there. That lip will be glued. And then we're going to have uh, rods going through uh, this hole, that hole, and then there'll be one at the back here where these uh, straps will wrap round. I've already cut them to uh, size, uh, using this drawing as a guideline. And there's three of these. Now I would have liked these uh, a bit thicker, but because of the uh, situation we're all in, um, the shop down the road, which is only 10 minutes down the road, sells every bit of extruded, bit of evergreen plastic you could think of. So I've had to just source what I've got to hand. So it'll have to do. So what I'm gonna do next, I don't know. Um, I'm making this up as I go along, but I'm not gonna start on the other side until I've finished this and uh, see if there's any issues and whether it all works or not. And the thing that's bugging me <laughs> in the back of my mind is that, uh, as I've just said, I've got all this to do again for the other side. So hopefully, as far as you're concerned, within a few seconds, we should see a bit more progress on uh, on these seats. So last night I um, put the two plastic rods and fed them through the uh, these bottom seats here. It almost looks like an extended stretcher bearer. Clamped it down, and then between these gaps, I put a bit of uh, Vallejo matte varnish just to seal them in and keep them in place. Once that had set, I'd uh, stuck the backrest on. I'd put a little dotted line at the back here, uh, so I knew where to position them. That's all dry and set now. So I've just got the last bit of rod, which will um, sit at the back like that, somehow. So my next thing to do is to get the position of that rod at the back. And I do that by um, just clamping the floor in, and then by eye, be, I'll be very careful of these uh, frongs here, these uh, straps. They're so easily bent and knocked and tear. So it, I don't know how it's gonna go when I start wrapping them around um, the third plastic rod. So I'll put it in like that, uh, get my seat height. whatever it will be by eye and then I know the bar will fit roughly around there so I'm trying not to uh, bend these frongs any more than I have to or these straps in my face. so it'll be something like that and you see where that uh, bit of the fuselage moulding is the bar will sit somewhere around there I'll just mark off in pencil roughly where it is on one of them frongs just the one that's all I need to uh, you can see a little mark there on the uh, back seat strap there. So it's roughly about there. I will take it, clamp all this down. From that mark there, I'll make some sort of jig so it all lines up properly. And then I will glue either sit this down like this and glue it like that, let it set, and then bend these. Um, straps around the rod. I may have to trim a bit of the top off. So I've got as far as I want to with the seats. They're all done. Very flimsy. I do keep catching them. So I'm going to put them away before I do any more damage. So they should. Sit in something like that, that sort of position. Uh, I'll add the legs at a later point in the build. So all that effort, just to give that sort of in interpretation.
I could have shown them folded up. That may have been easier. I've been doing a bit of a uh, cutting up and uh, maybe in the next video I'll tell you why. So I want to thank you for watching and uh, see you later.